hello everyone it's been some time we are what we are doing is we are going over some set of standard graph problems and while solving them we are trying to establish some set of similarities and differences among them and develop a sense of connectivity among the different problems so this is the problem number three that we are going to we are solving the problem is shortest source to destination path so we just don't have to find if there exists a source to destination path if it doesn't if it does which is guaranteed in this question we need to find the shortest path so let's read the problem statement given a 2d binary matrix of dimension n cross m find the minimum number of steps required to reach from a comma b to x comma y so we can only move left right up and down we cannot move diagonally and only those cells that contain one we cannot move through zero so zero is a wall it says and one is a path that can be traversed in terms of graph so those are the nodes that are connected so uh, for the given example it is n equal to 3 and m equal to 4 so we have a 3 cross 4 matrix and um, we are given the following matrix values so I've cre created an equivalent matrix over here and what we are going to do is we will see how the output comes to be 5 so the starting coordinate is 0 comma 0 so that's here and the ending coordinates that is x comma y it's given 2 comma 3 so that's over here so we are starting from here and we need to reach here how do we do that right so for this question we will move from 1 to 1 we cannot move through 0 and we only can go left and right so this is the path and if I were to number them 1 2 3 4 and 5 5 is the output therefore and amazingly uh, interestingly uh, for this problem there is there exists just one path and that is the shortest path but it could have been a different case there could have been multiple paths and who knows uh, what is the shortest how do we do that we need to find the shortest path one way is to what naive way is to uh, it uh, to reach out from all the path paths that are unique paths that are available and store the path distances in um, in uh, store keep storing the path distances and then find the minimum of them but that that can take a lot of time on a huge um, data so that's an inefficient way the efficient way would be to use breadth first search and we'll see how that makes sense so for a graph let's say let's talk about graphs right um, so this is a graph just any random graph okay and suppose this is our source I'll change the color so this is our source the breadth first search how does it proceed is it will first proceed in a radii of 1 right and then it will increase its radii to 2 this is radii 1 this is radii 2 so uh, when we observe breadth first search what what we actually do is we move away from the source in a radial manner so this is one so if if in the when we are in the radii 1 we meet the destination that 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 the, the first encounter with the destination on a breadth first search is the shortest path right because when we do the breadth first search with source at as a starting point because then it becomes the center of our radial search and then we move radially outwards in every direction and when 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 uh, there is no there is no uh, more nodes to be explored of that radii we increase the radii by just one element or just just one count and 
yes uh, the the criteria for breadth first search to give shortest path is that the graph must be unweighted so if there are two nodes and they have an edge and it has a weight attached to it so let's say like uh, in maps we have uh, cities and there are distances 10 kilometer 20 kilometer then the bfs won't give the shortest path because every edge is different it's not uh, it's not unweighted for unweighted we uh, assume every edge is of one dimension one unit dimension and therefore it works quite uh, perfectly to give the shortest path so the idea is to simply apply the breadth first search to uh, to the data that we are given and uh, the first encounter just return the radial reach you are at and theoretically it makes sense but how exactly are we supposed to track the radial reach and how exactly are we supposed to implement the graph breadth first search on a matrix so let's move on to the editor and see it there so on the editor i have already set up the entire example and we just need to function uh, to code the function find shortest path and the idea is that bfs gives shortest path between any two any any node and the start node given that the graph is unweighted so let's start the programming and of course we are going to just do the breadth first search and somehow keep track of the steps or the radii we are at so I'll create a visitor uh, set as usual but first of all I need the start and end coordinates so start is I'll store them in a tuple as we do when we uh, perform graph operations on a matrix so if in the if in case you do not know how to uh, do that just check out the last video it's a short one and you'll be ready for this one so we have the start and end coordinates in form of a tuple now I'll create a queue and insert only the start element to it. Now um, I need to create a variable step which will keep track of the radii we are at when we do breadth first search and then followed by the usual loop. While the queue is not empty, I want to keep executing this loop. Over here I'll introduce a new variable that will be node count. This variable is supposed to keep track of all the nodes that are available on that radii so when the node count is zero that means there is no node on that step or on that radii so we need to increase the step so that is what i'm going to do i'll increase the step by one because now we are at a distance greater by one we are looking at nodes so that is the logic so i'll iterate over the node count and I'll keep my variable of iteration as underscore because I'm, I'll not be using it. So what I'm doing is, uh, let's say the step is one, the radii is one. So, and I find five nodes that are around the, around the vertex, which are at a distance of radii one. So for the five, node count will be equal to five. And for the, while I iterate over the five vertices, five uh, nodes, I do not want to increment the step. So therefore I'm creating this loop and once the uh, node count is over five, I want to get out of the loop and increment the step by one and uh, also update node count as the length of the queue, which throughout this loop will be update and uh, will be creating it for radii. Uh, since all the radii one elements will be popped by then, only all the radii whatever the radii is plus one elements will be remaining and that will be the node count. So um, I, I feel that it is uh, not going to naturally stick to you, but for a reference, remember the way we used to find the height of a binary tree using breadth first search. You can look up on the internet, how do we do that? And this code is exactly or quite 98% similar to that. So if you know that this will make a lot of sense and will be very simple for you if you don't know that just be patient go through line by line and try it on an example and see how it's working and then you will basically feel it intuitively and 
uh, also logically by time you you'll get it so for the first timers i expect this to be hard because it is hard to grasp but hang in there now i'll be proceeding with the regular breakfast search procedure so i'll pop out from the queue from the front of the queue vertex i'll give it v and if v is already visited i'll simply continue if it is not i'll add it to the visited because now we are visiting it and then i'll be iterating over the neighbors of v and the neighbors are up down left and right cells so the coordinates will be and in a range by the way this is from the previous video so if you do not get how we are why we are doing this uh, this, this is basically the uh, transition of conversion of matrix to graph logically so what we are doing is we are creating edges between the left right up and down coordinates so in the form of tuples i'm going to write everything so plus one for right minus one for left on the x coordinate so these are the four neighbors of the vertex and while i'm iterating over it i want to make sure i do not get out of the grid so if n of 0 is less than 0 or n of 1 is greater than uh, less than 0 or in fact if n of 0 is greater than equal to n so n is the length of the grid and n we are using for neighbors as well so I, I need to change the variable I'll make the length of grid as capital N so I can use it over here so when if the neighboring coordinate is greater than capital N that is the length of the grid I want to just continue because it's not a valid grid coordinate it's outside the grid also if the grid grid n0 and n1 coordinates basically so if the grid value at these coordinates is not equal to or is equal to 0 I want to continue because it's a wall we cannot go from there and if n equal to equal to end that's that means we have reached the destination i just simply want to return the step we are at that will be the shortest path and and if n is not in visited so, so the sim, uh, simple breath first search over here so if n is not in visited we want to append it to the queue and at the outside of all the loops i want to simply return minus one that is if if we didn't reach the destination uh, by the end of the traversal there is no path possible so minus one to denote that now i would like you to take a moment to look over the entire code and reflect So now I'll run the program to see if uh, the output, desired output is there on the screen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it threw an error and it makes sense. So I'll name it uh, ARR for array here and as well over here as well. And I need to pass A, B, X and Y coordinates as well. I forgot. Okay. So now this should work. So now the output that we have on the screen is minus one. It's not what we have expected. It should have been five. So somewhere there is a mistake. Okay. Um. So for the y coordinate, it should be the for the it should be m because it's not a square grid, but uh, n cross m grid. And for better readability, I'll make N and M both capital. Now I'll run the code. Mm -hmm. It's five. So the code is working as it should. So this was the mistake over here. Grid is not square in this question. And with that, we are done. Congratulations. This was not a simple question. Uh, I, I recommend you to practice and go over the video if more than once is required. And it's totally fine. I'll go over as many times as you need. This was not a simple question. And for the first timers, I appreciate your 
patience for sticking throughout the video it is not easy i want to congratulate you for that and best wishes just keep keep uh, trying or your keep trying your head around it and you'll eventually get it and it will seem all natural to you so best of luck for that and thank you for watching this video